I am asked to talk briefly on navigating India's economic diplomacy and trade relations. Friends, empowering the workforce for innovation has become a growing need with fast emergence of technologies like AI, machine learning, and automation. The workforce that was very competent only few years ago has increasingly becoming redundant and therefore skilling and reskilling of these people especially in the countries like India and UAE has become uh, an issue of paramount importance. In India under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi in last 10 years has created a very sustainable and strong ecosystem for this skilling and reskilling. Not only in the conventional fields, but also in the emerging areas such as automation. India recognizes the importance of addressing regional skilling gaps, which was not addressed by the old fashioned education system. And India has therefore emerged as a country which has, which is posed to drastically change the way the youngsters are being trained so that they become more skilled. For example, the Skill India Initiative, which is launched some eight years ago, has now trained 14 million youths in India and then upskilled 5.4 million another employable categories. We have a techni technical institutes which gives the basic technical education. The number has gone up to 300. In addition to that, the premier technological institutes in India, which are branded as Indian Institutes of Technology, the seven new such premier institutes have been added in last 10 years, including several management institutes, several healthcare institutes. The number has now gone up significantly by several fold in last 10 years in India. However, I must emphasize that the fact that India has not confined this approach only to itself, but also they have been instrumental in collaborating with several countries of emerging economies, as well as for the countries of Global South to impart the experience and the expertise to develop such a premier institutes. Two classic examples I can give is about recently set up Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi, opening a campus in Abu Dhabi. And I am glad to note that the first batch of postgraduate uh, engineers is being now trained in the Abu Dhabi campus. Similarly, in Janjibar, Indian Institute of Technology, Chennai, in a, is setting up a standalone campus. In all this, the brand of Indian Institute of Technology is very important, but at the same time, the cooperation of the local governments is also equally imperative. I am very happy to say that the UAE government has taken a very proactive st steps while setting up this IIT campus in Abu Dhabi by providing all the necessary infrastructure including land while the technical expertise and IIT brand will help to kickstart such an institute and bring it to the world stage. India also acknowledges UAE's emerging labor market and regional dynamics. It's, UAE has a tremendous potential in upscaling its labor market and also with availability of highly skilled youth 
it, and it's changing the regional dynamics. Strengthening ties with UAE across the various sectors present tremendous opportunities, not only for both the countries, but also for the entire neighborhood and all emerging economies. Friends, for India, the engagement with the Global South is one of the top priorities. As you all know that in recently concluded G20 summit, it was because of India's initiative, African Union was granted a full membership of G20. Even during COVID, India's vaccine maitri, which essentially means the friendship through vaccination, has resulted into tremendous support to the many emerging economies and developing countries where the vaccines were not available. India has provided 300 million vaccine doses to more than 100 countries through this initiative, partly as a grant in aid and partly through the commercial arrangement at a very subsidized rates. Friends, India-UAE trade relationship is also an exemplary trade relationship all across the globe. And it is based on the win-win situation. Free trade agreement with UAE has resulted in a increase in the trade uh, between two countries in last one year. India has also coming up with various initiatives to further facilitate trade and also associated businesses such as tourism. For example, promoting trade in domestic currency has become a buzzword in India's trade policy. Just yesterday, when our Prime, India's Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, is traveling to UAE, he has signed an agreement with UAE to do the transactions in Indian rupee currency by a specific instrument called as rupee card. And that is being launched, which is very much in practice in India, but now that facility is also available in UAE. India's transformative digital transaction platform of Universal Payment Initiative is now available to several countries so for very easy transactions and that platform also is likely to be available in UAE very soon. Another development on the trade side between India and UAE is also uh, an announcement that based Based on the China's Dragon Mart here in UAE, India has announced the build to build Bharat Mart, which will be a massive warehousing facilities from where the Indian goods can be transported and traded with the other part of the world using UAE as the base. India's infrastructure projects are also gaining a massive boost in last 10 years. Not only in the connectivity by road, sea and air, but an integrated connectivity approach has been now a buzzword and therefore you will see a lot of development and investment opportunities in this area. Last but not least, India's climate leadership in association and in collaboration with many countries, including UAE, has set up as an exemplary tools and initiative by in COP28, as well as several alliances like uh, Sustainable Development and the Solar Alliance announced by India, which is also wholeheartedly supported by UAE. These are only few areas I would like to mention where India-UAE collaboration as well as the India's initiative to engage and interact with the Global South is going to be the next paradigm in the upcoming years. I again thank you the organizers and I must say at the end that this is just a beginning and there are many more opportunities for
collaboration not only on bilateral level but multilateral level uh, so as to have common goals and achieve them. Thank you very much.